Hello and welcome to this video on gastroesophageal reflux disease. In this video, we are going to look at the pathophysiology, clinical features, diagnosis, and management of gastroesophageal reflux disease. I will only mention a few facts regarding the pathophysiology, although detailed mechanisms are there. The movements of our gastrointestinal tract are programmed to propel foods from the mouth towards the anus. Likewise, food in the esophagus passes into the stomach and there are several mechanisms to prevent foods from entering the esophagus from the stomach. They are low esophageal sphincter function. Next, the right crust of the diaphragm. It forms a sling-like structure around the esophagus which helps to create a high pressure zone that keeps the low esophageal sphincter closed and prevent systemic acid from flowing back into the esophagus. The angle of the esophagus as it enters the stomach, which is sometimes called the angle of his, also helps to prevent acid reflux. Intraabdominal pressure. When intraabdominal pressure is increased, it helps to compress the stomach and force the contents downwards, which can help to keep the low esophageal sphincter closed and prevent stomach acid flowing back into the esophagus. Also, the intraabdominal pressure compresses the lower part of the esophagus, making it closed. That's why in cases of hiatus hernia, they develop gastroesophageal reflux disease because this compression is lost. The mucosal arrangement of the lower esophagus the lower esophagus has a specialized mucosal arrangement called the squamoculumna junction, which is the boundary between the esophageal mucosa and the gastric mucosa. The squamoculumna junction is an important barrier that helps to prevent acid reflux by preventing the acidic contents of the stomach from coming into contact with the sensitive esophageal tissue. Therefore, GORD is developed when these preventive mechanisms are disturbed causing stomach contents reflux into the esophagus, causing troublesome symptoms and complications. Regarding the clinical features of GORD, the classic symptoms are heartburn or pyrosis and regurgitation. There are other symptoms as well, including dysphagia, Global sensation, odynophagia, and estriesophageal symptoms such as chronic cough, hoarseness, and wheezing. These respiratory symptoms occur due to chronic acid reflux into the larynx and airway. The complications of GORD are esophagitis, Barrett's esophagus esophageal stricture and respiratory complications such as coughing, wheezing and pneumonia. In a previous video, we discussed Barrett's esophagus, so you go back to that video and refresh your knowledge. How do we diagnose gastroesophageal reflux disease? The diagnosis can be made clinically if the classic symptoms are present. As you know now, the classic symptoms are heartburn and regurgitation. However, if other symptoms are present, we should investigate the patient to exclude other possible diagnoses. Not in all situations do we do upper GI endoscopy for these patients. The indications for upper GI endoscopy are Features suggestive of malignancy, such as new onset dyspepsia in patients older than 60 years, evidence of GI bleeding, anorexia, unexplained weight loss, dysphagia, and odynophagia. And also abnormal upper GI tract imaging, risk factors for Barrett's esophagus and not responding to PPI therapy are indications to proceed with upper GI endoscopy.
We can do 24-hour ambulatory pH monitoring by inserting a probe into the gastroesophageal junction to confirm the diagnosis. It is the gold standard test to diagnose gastroesophageal reflux disease. And also we can do esophageal manometry to exclude any esophageal motility disorder. The management of GORD begins with lifestyle and dietary modifications. The lifestyle modifications are practices for weight loss, elevation of the head end of the bed while sleeping, and avoiding food triggers such as caffeine, chocolate, spicy foods, and fatty foods. All patients should be started with anti-secretary therapy for patients with mild or intermittent symptoms, a low dose H2 receptor blocker such as hemotidine can be given along with an antiacid such as sucralfate. For patients with severe or frequent symptoms, a proton pump inhibitor can be given such as omeprazole and assess the response in 4 weeks. Prokinetics has a place in treating patients with GORD, especially if they have delayed gastric emptying. Finally, there are anti-reflux procedures that can be done for patients who do not respond to medical management. There are several options available including endoscopic radiofrequency treatment, transoral incisionless fund applications, laparoscopic partial fund application, and laparoscopic Nissen or complete fund application. In summary, we discussed regarding gastroesophageal reflux disease including its pathophysiology, clinical features, diagnosis and management. GORD is caused when the preventive mechanisms of gastrointestinal tract are disturbed, leading to stomach contents refluxing into the esophagus and causing symptoms such as heartburn, regurgitation and dysphagia. Complications of GORD can include esophagitis, Barrett's esophagus, esophageal stricture and respiratory complications. Diagnosis can be made clinically, but further investigations may be required to exclude other possible diagnoses. Lifestyle modifications and anti-secretary therapy are the mainstays of management, and anti-reflux procedures also bring options for patients who do not respond to medical management.